Hey everyone, and welcome to my biggest project yet. You are looking at Project Snowspeeder, a project that I've spent months designing, modeling, and printing. This is the quote unquote upcoming project I've been waffling on about all winter. This thing represents about 80 hours of work in Fusion 360, drawing from my experience as an automotive technician in order to overcomplicate the design. All of the parts aside from standard remote control model parts and 3mm hardware is designed and printed by yours truly. The speeder scoots along with a brushless motor and a 6 inch 3 bladed propeller sitting in a cowl which might increase its thrust but I put in the extra effort to include it because it just looks cool. The motor is actuated by a Turnigy plush 30 amp ESC connected to a 3 cell 2200 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery which is secured to the chassis with industrial velcro. The suspension is handled by a dual wishbone short long arm design with a shock and spring from a Kyosho branded buggy that I had laying around. These shocks were my starting point and I designed the whole suspension around them. The steering was designed to be as simple as possible. A modified front member houses a steering servo which is directly screwed onto a joint for the front ski. The chassis includes this chevron design in order to provide rigidity in the front to back and side to side axes. Although future improvements are required, this design does allow it to print flat. Since the fan doesn't have a rudder for steering, I designed the skis to not only have these lateral grooves to make it track better, but also to print without supports. Without these grooves, the whole back end would just be slipping and sliding around. I wanted it to go straight. The entire thing is designed to be printed on a 3D printer whose bed is 200 by 200 millimeters, and all of the parts print in one piece aside from the fan cowl which needs to be glued together. Check out the Thingiverse link in the description if you want to build your own. Alright, enough waffling, let's see it in action. So what you should have seen just there is uh, two things. One is that, well, I need to step my filming game up for my RC project like this. And yes, there will be more RC projects coming. And two is that there is a serious design flaw with this thing. Um, actually, more than one. So let's talk about that. Now, keep in mind, I am no engineer, but I do play one on YouTube. Uh, I designed this whole front section here to be as kind of simple to assemble as possible. So under here you have a servo horn that comes standard with every single servo that you order and it's just screwed into this piece here. Now that makes it super easy because there is no steering mechanism. The mechanism is directly here but it also makes it very weak because all of the strain from hitting stuff on the front here gets taken up by this plastic piece. Now, I can solve this very easily by just ordering an aluminum version of this, which they do make, and I will have one on the way, but I'm not sure if that is the long-term solution. 
I think in the long term I'll have to take this servo and mount it back here somewhere and then have it linked to the steering here via some rods and maybe some springs in order to take the load off of the servo horn itself. It's, the servo horn can take quite a bit of abuse this way, but it's just the physical bouncing. It's just, it's too weak to do that. Another design issue with this thing that you didn't see in the video is that in deep snow, the front ski just buries itself. So I think it's a combination of two things, or maybe even three, uh, one of which is that the skis are simply not big enough. They're kind of pushing it for length already. They're about 200 mils long. Um, so they could go a little bit wider, but I think the other issue is that the center of thrust, this motor here, is mounted up so high that when it thrusts forward, it tends to bury the front end down. Now I can probably fix that by taking this pivot and moving it back a little bit so when it pushes down, the front of the ski will want to come up and sort of dig itself naturally out of its own holes. Um, but that still means I need a redesign. And I don't know about you, where you are in the world, but Canada is getting pretty warm at this point, so this will have to wait until next year. Another issue is with these skis themselves. You see, I think the good part is that I designed them to be removable. They've got these 3D printed pins and they just slide right off. But the downside is this underneath grooving. In deeper snow, there is a lot of surface area in here, which means that the motor had to be upgraded in order to make this thing actually move. The snow you saw in the video is actually um, the morning after a warm day. So it was a warm day, cold night, and then the morning after is when I, I could run this thing because uh, it would skitter on top of the frozen crust that the snow had caused overnight, the, the freeze had caused overnight. And that's really the only place where this thing excels. In deeper snow, it just rubs on these grooves here and it slows it down a lot. Another thing that I want to mention before the end is that this cowling here is about six and a half inches in diameter. Now, this was originally intended to be designed around a motor I already had and a 10 inch propeller. But somewhere in my conversion from millimeters to inches or inches to millimeters, I got confused and I missed a decimal or something and the cowl came out this size, you know, six and a half inches. I tried to make it work by ordering these three bladed propellers, but in the end it was not enough power to make it go. I was actually pretty stressed out about the whole situation, so what I had done is I had printed and designed a 10 inch cowl. So this one here had to be printed in four parts and glued together, and here's the 10 inch prop on the inside of that. But it turned out that uh, this motor and prop combination was still not powerful enough to overcome the grooves in the skis. All this to say is that this project here will be constantly evolving. If you want to print it as is, go ahead. If you want to modify it, go ahead. I will be continuously updating the parts and putting out new parts, so check the Thingiverse link in the description below. And I also want to mention that this whole thing is made possible by the support, and that would be financial, moral, emotional support, from my Patreon patrons. My viewers do do their, their part by watching and liking and subscribing, but the Patreon patrons are the ones that I bounce ideas off of, they're the ones that get the early access videos, and they're the ones that I'm still incredulous about having. So thanks to you guys if you're my Patreon patrons. For the rest of you, this is not over. I'm not happy with the filming quality I got out in the field. I'm not happy with the design. Like I said, it'll keep getting updated. And most of all, the snow is gone. So I'm going to have to figure something out to make this not only for snow. Thanks for watching.